Hello there, everyone. My name is Sue Shardley. I'm the developer community manager here at Redis. Now, <laughs> we're back. Twice in one day, you've got a bonus session with me and Simon today. Those of you who are watching December Day 11 earlier today will notice that um, there are a few issues with Simon's demo. There was a little problem, but we managed to fix it straight after we finished going live, which is absolutely typical. So we just wanted to come back and do that live demo again. So I've got Simon back here. Simon leads developer advocacy here at Redis. I'm going to uh, just hand it straight over to you, Simon. Thanks, Suze. Um, yeah, so demo gremlins. Um, one of the things that I do a lot with Redis is I'm in and out of different versions of Redis with different versions of Redis modules and all sorts of things because I'm quite often helping people out on our Discord. Um, so you can go to our Discord at discord.gg slash Redis. And um, you can talk to our team and you can get help with all things Redis and you know, sometimes wider programming issues around application development. So I was unfortunately in our previous uh, stream running an older version of Redis search that didn't have some of the indexing capabilities that Redis OM for Python requires. Um, so two learning things here. Number one, check your Docker container. That's my bad. And um, number two, you can sign up at Redis Cloud and have this all managed for you. And our free tier includes Redis Search. So you can try this on here and not make the mistake that I did. Um, so I've now got everything up and running again. And I'm not going to do the full presentation again as to the rationale for Redis Search um, or what we are um, what we are aiming to do. But know that what we're doing here is I have a, a small project that, uh, here it is, that has some animal data. So the, the animals have these attributes, name, species, age, etc. cetera. Um, we're gonna load them into Redis using Redis OM for Python, and we're gonna store them in Redis hashes. And to do that, we create a Redis OM for Python model class that models each of those fields that we want to store. We say it's a hash model, so it's going to end up in a Redis hash. And for each field, we basically say what, what the type is and whether we want it indexing. Um, we have a special field down here where we're going to use full text search as well. So the too long don't read on this problem is normally if we store things in Redis hashes, we can only get to them through the key name, not any of these other fields. So if I had stored this as like adoptable colon 1001 and it was a dog called Luna, then I can only retrieve Luna through 1001, um, not through their name or the fact that they're a dog. Um, and Redis Search adds SQL-like querying capabilities plus full text uh, search over Redis, over both hashes and JSON documents. We'll show hashes today. We'll work with JSON documents later in December. So I have code here to load the uh, uh, data into Redis. And I'm just going to use Python's standard CSV reader, loop over the, the lines in the CSV. And I'm going to create an instance of that adoptable class for each one. Uh, then Redis Ohm gives us a couple of things. I can ask it, what's the primary key? It's going to generate keys for me. And I can set a format for those keys. But I'm just going to run with the default today. And it gives me this save function. So I can call save here. And it's going to store it in Redis. So as a developer, I don't really need to know too much about what's going on in Redis or what the commands are. I can just run it and save it. And then down here, we're going to create a Redis search index. Um, that is going to use the fields in the model, create a Redis search index, and send the appropriate command to Redis to build that up. That will then watch over these hashes. So any changes we have in them, um, add new ones, delete, change data. <laughs> It will update the index in real time because the index is stored in RAM. As with everything in Redis, a copy of the data is in RAM and all reads come from RAM for speed. So that's our loading uh, scenario. Then we're going to look at some querying. So really quickly, I'll just run the, uh, the loader here. So Python uh, load adoptables. And off it goes. And it's loaded each of those pets. And these are the primary keys for the pets. Um, so we can see what's in Redis now by looking at Redis Insight. I've got Redis Insight 2 preview version here. Uh, that's available for download if you want to try it out. And what I can do is um, hit this, reset. We've now got all of these hashes in what was previously an empty database. 
and we can see the data for one of the animals here. So it's basically the fields that we had in that model. So this animal is not known to be good with children. It's a male, it's 13, uh, good with other animals, dog. Uh, here's a description, it's a collie dog. And you see insights really nice. I get this pop-up window and, and lots of help with what I'm doing. This is great, but we can't really query these animals like this with the key that OM's created for us. That's why we're using Redis search. Um, so the queries we were looking at before, and we will look at again, are, um, let's start here. So how do we find uh, things that match other criteria that's not just the key name? And that's where Redis search is great. And also Redis Ohm gives us a nice high level interface on that. So I can call this find method here and I pass in sort of predicates. For what do I want to find? And then what do I want to return? So I want all of the things that match. Um, so here I'm saying I want all of the adoptables. So things that are in those adoptable hashes in Redis where the name field is an exact match for Luna. So that's going to find us an animal called Luna. And if we go here and clear this down and then do Python query adoptables.py, what we'll see now that we didn't see earlier because I was running the wrong version in the Redis search was we get some results. Um, so here we see uh, the records come back for Luna. Python, Redis Ohm has transformed that into a dict in Python, and we're just printing that out. So here we found Luna, and we didn't need to know what Luna's primary key or uh, Redis key was in order to do that. So that's a very, very simple uh, case. So we're just finding one thing. What if we want to find some more things? So let's look at, uh, for example, find all the dogs that are male. So a couple of faceted search criteria. So now we're going to do adoptable. That's my model, dot find. I want to find adoptable things. And I want to find those where the species is a dog and the uh, sex of the dog is a male. So give me all the male dogs. Um, if I don't specify dot all, we'll get all of them. Um, I could specify like the first or however many I want, but I just want all of them in this case. So if I go ahead and run this one now, uh, let's clear that down because we're gonna have some output. So you see now there's quite a few male dogs. So everything that's come back is a dog here, it's male and we've got every bit of information about it. And we can build up different sorts of queries. So, yeah, so far we've done like exact match queries. So we can do ranges. So the age was an integer in our model. So Redis search understands uh, numbers and it understands numeric ranges. So here again with the Redis OM interface, I can say, let's find dogs. So nothing new there, where the age is between nine and 10 or the age is nine or 10 because it's greater than eight and it's less than 11. Um, Redis search will go off and look in the hashes and find ones that match. Um, it'll have done that from its pre-computed index that it's keeping up to date for us all the time. So this will still be blazingly fast. And then we can make the database do some more work for us. So if I wanted them sorted by age, I can do that either increment or decrementally. Um, saves me some work in my application, moves it to the database. So if we run this query by again, just oops, running Let's run it in the terminal window with the bigger text. There we go. And let's type clear properly. Let's just use the command history. There we go. If I run this, I now get dogs back again. Um, and these are dogs that match that criteria. Oh, no, it would be. Well, it would be if I actually ran the right query. There we go. So find dogs in age range. Clear that out and try again. Right, here we go. So here's our, here are our dogs that are between nine and 10 years old. So the only criteria we specified have to be a dog, have to be greater than eight or less than 11. So these all match as we'd expect. So that's cool. We can do exact text matches. We can do range integer matches. But I said Redis search had like another party trick, which is full text uh, search. So we indexed our description field. When we did that, we, uh, let's look at the model here really quickly. We gave it this extra parameter in OM of we want Redis to full text search it. So when the index was created in Redis search, we uh, 
basically said this field's a full text search field, please index it as such. Whereas something like this field, species, that will be indexed as what's called a tag field. So it has a limited range of values. You know, our adoption center takes in cats, dogs, reptiles. We don't deal with, say, birds or fish. So they wouldn't be a valid value there. So species is indexed as more like a tag. And description, which is a lot of text, we're doing full text search. So this allows us to write like really, really flexible queries over a data set that we just, we just couldn't do this with without Redis search in a key value store. So here we want to find cats that are good with children. So what does good with children mean? Well, first off, we need the species to be a cat. Then we have a children flag and we need that to be yes. So we at the adoption center have said this cat is good with children. And then we want to make really, really sure they're good with children. So we want to go into that description field and find some words or things that look like those words that indicate you know, the cat is pretty calm and maybe playful. So here I'm saying the description needs to have something like play in it. So playing, playful, play, et cetera, um, the things that that word stems from. And this is this here tilde is a sort of not operator. So the description shouldn't have things that look like anxious and it shouldn't have things that look like nervous. So if we have a cat that we know is good with children but is anxious and nervous, then maybe it's not good with little children. And you know, this sort of query allows us to refine exactly what we want. So I'm going to do two things this time. I'm going to run this query. And I'm also going to bring up a, uh, let's clear this one down. I'm going to bring up another terminal window. I'm going to look at what actually happens in Redis uh, underneath. So let's grab oops, a second window. Clear that down. And what I'm going to do is run Redis CLI here. And then Redis CLI has this command called monitor. And don't run this on a live Redis because it's quite heavyweight. It's basically going to monitor all the commands that get sent to Redis. So what we're going to see, the reason why we're doing this, is to see the work that Redis OM is doing for us. So when I run this code here, which is nice high level, I want to find things that match these criteria. Redis Home for Python is going to translate this into the appropriate ft.search command that Redis Search expects, and it's going to execute that command. And then it's going to run a whole load of get commands to return the information about uh, from hashes about the things that match. So when I run this, we'll see a couple of things go off. So in the window on the right here, we'll have uh, what's happening in Redis. In the window on the left here, we will have the output. So let me just double check yeah we're running fine cats good with children and i saved that so if i do now uh run my query so here we've run fine cats that are good with children and we've got the results back and what you'll see here is that that translated into this ft.search command but i'll make it a little bit bigger so redis own for python saved us having to know the uh search syntax and it generated this ft.search the name of the index we're searching which is associated with the class in python that we set as the model and then it generated this search query so we want a tag field where species is cat a tag field where children is yes and then um it's created the right things for the description field containing play but not anxious not nervous and then it's run that query and it will get the first 10 and then it would have paginated more back if there'd have been more. But we got how many, we got a few hits here. So these are our cats that by our sort of fuzzy definition are good with children. So Logan's good with children because he loves to play and all of the other fields happen to match. And um, Puddles is good with children because he's a playmate. Um, Chloe is good with children because, let's see, um, I guess because Chloe doesn't, oh, no, there we go, playful. Um, and in none of these things, you don't see anything that looks like anxious or nervous. So that's um, that's basically the demo that I was hoping to give you in the previous uh, stream, and which went a little bit wrong because I was using an older docking container. So I would recommend if you try this, 
do it on Redis Cloud or do it on the uh, the latest Redis search container that you can get from Docker. So that was basically it. So bonus redo of today's stream. Sorry about earlier, but we wanted to make it right for you. Um, I'll just bring Suze back on again to remind you what's happening with the rest of December. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, well done for sorting that out. And uh, thanks for coming back and showing everybody what it should have looked like. Um, hopefully everybody enjoyed those two videos. Uh, I think it's quite cool to have done two in one day. We definitely didn't plan to do that, did we? Yeah, well, not in, not in this way. And of course, I figured out what it was about two minutes after we went off stream last time. Um, and obviously we do prep and prepare these things. Um, but like I say, I'm in and out of a lot of different contexts with helping people with lots of different Redis versions, um, which, you know, is one of those things. Um, but if you'd like to get help on Redis, come chat with us on, on Discord. We'd love to see you. Um, sometimes we don't get the right answer the first time, but we will get there for you. And, um, and yeah, we'd love to talk to you about all things Redis. So Redis Search has a channel in there. Uh, we have a course for Redis Search over at Redis University. It's the RU203 course. Uh, no prerequisites for that. And you can run that in the cloud as well if you want to. Yep. And uh, Simon's just showed us a little bit of how to work with um, Redis Ohm for Python. And you did do a little taster on that earlier on in um, December, didn't you? But yet mm -hmm. tomorrow, not yesterday, yes. tomorrow, I'm getting mixed up with words. <laughs> Tomorrow, we've got, if you're a JavaScripter, please do join us tomorrow. We've got our colleague, Guy Royce, who's going to give us a very quick taster into Redis Ohm for Node. I'm really looking forward to that one. So, yeah, thanks again, Simon, for uh, taking the time to come back and do that and joining me no for the second time today. Uh, we will see everybody again tomorrow. So, yeah, keep an eye on our website. Subscribe to us here on YouTube or Twitch to get a reminder when we go live. And until then, look after yourselves. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.